Luigi's Mansion. This was probably the very first horror game that I ever played on the Nintendo GameCube. Like, I know it's not a horror game, but come on. Like, I was five years old when the first Luigi's Mansion came out on the Nintendo GameCube. And uh, honestly, watching my dad play that, I don't think I can be blamed for thinking it was a horror game. I mean, the very star of the game for a five-year-old is terrifying. The creepy music of it, the deep voice of a Nintendo that plays, and the horror, like creepy Nintendo horror music that plays when it says press the start button. I just want to play that because as a five-year-old, I think any five-year-old would find this terrifying. So, let's play it. Nintendo. Anyway, recently Nintendo released Luigi's Mansion 2 on the Nintendo Switch. And growing up, I never had a 3DS, which unfortunately was the only console that was carrying it, Dark Moon Luigi's Mansion 2, so I never got to play it, unfortunately. But now I have. And about five days ago, I came down with COVID. I, this is the first day that I've actually gotten better from it. And, uh, unfortunately, I had a lot of free time on my hands. That was the good side of having COVID. And, um, all I did was I would read, sleep, and game. And repeat for, like, five days. That's all I did. But that got me the opportunity to finish the whole game of Dark Moon. And, uh, this gives me the chance to say what I thought about the game. And, um, honestly, what I can say about it is, um, um, it's the biggest piece of dog shit. No, 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 I wouldn't go that far. I don't think, uh, saying what The Rock says about that. Uh, would describe Luigi's Mansion. I think the best way to say it is I don't know. Like, let's get out on the screen. I don't know. Because I really don't know how to describe it. That's the best way. That's the end of the video, guys. I don't know how to describe this. Let's roll the credits. Seriously. This game, I had a hard time thinking about what I liked. Um, there definitely are parts that really annoyed me to it, and yet there were parts that I thought was really fun. But, let's get right to it, guys. I'm just gonna start it off. Start off with, uh, Egad, his laboratory, and in this one, the ghosts aren't his enemy. Uh, he's just working in his lab, and apparently the ghosts are, like, his helpers now. They're going around his lab, putting stuff up, working, things like that. But then we have this, like, purple moon up in the sky where our old enemy, King Boo, he shows up, it destroys the dark moon, and all the ghosts go wild. And this leads to Egad reaching out to Luigi for help, and that sets up the whole premise of Luigi's Mansion 2 Dark Moon. I... I thought it was a good premise, but I hate Egad in this story. Like, it's really cool when you first meet him in order to communicate with him. Like in the first game, how uh, the communication between Egad and Luigi is the Game Boy horror that Luigi uses, which I thought was cool. In this one, it's, he calls it like the dual scream, I think. It's the Nintendo DS, which is pretty awesome. Nintendo, I like that Nintendo's uses their own consoles in their own games. I think it's an awesome idea they use. Anyway, use that to communicate with uh, Egad through the game, but he is so annoying! Like, 
Uh, in the first one, he'll pop up giving you messages here and there, but in this one, every second, every ten minutes, he'll end up calling Luigi in the game, and half the time it ends up having to be insulting to Luigi. Like, uh, he'll say a piece to Luigi like, Oh, you're such a scaredy cat, you're a little coward, you're never gonna be a hero like your brother Mario, things like that. And I'm like, just like, SHUT UP EGAN! NO ONE LIKES YOU! Uh, just, Egan in this game, he bugs me. I don't like him at all in this game. The going off in different missions in this game is really strange, too. I didn't like the fact that this game is set off in separate missions. Like, I like how the first one is. Like, uh, it's one big long mission and then Egan will contact you and bring you back to the lab for the ghosts that you've caught. And with this one, like, you'll complete maybe like a 10 to 20 minute mission. Egan will call you and then you'll go back to the lab. Which I thought, like, I know that this game was created for people with the 3DS that were, like, playing it off their, like, on a bus or whatever. It was meant to be played on the go on a mobile game console. So, Nintendo was probably thinking, like, um, these people aren't going to be playing this game, like, for a 30-minute mission. They don't have time for that. So, let's split it up. So, I get that's probably the reason. But, I like the first one, how you have these giant missions to go on, and that is just taken away in this game, being the, these missions being separated into these 5, 10, 15 minute missions. It's so annoying. But I do like the way that you're set up, though, how Egad sends a pixelated Luigi to his different, uh, li different missions in each mansion. But also, that takes away the horror of the first one. You know when, like, uh, in the first one, when Egad is waving Luigi off as Luigi goes into the mansion to maybe die in one of the missions that he's sent on? That's taken away in this, which takes away the horror of it that scared me. But at the same time, this is a more kid-friendly version of Luigi's Mansion, so, yeah. A concept that Luigi's Mansion 2 Dark Moon has that I thought was really cool is that instead of one big giant mansion, you got five mansions to go through. The first mansion is like your normal giant tutorial mansion. I mean, it's kind of cool that you can go outside, things like that, but it's almost kind of like a giant chore thing that it turns into. I mean, um... There's one part where uh, Luigi's just sucking up these spider webs, burning these spider webs. He got to burn up a total of 15, which just feels like a chore. But it is cool as you go through the first mission, you can learn these different things about the poltergust. Like, the dark light, I think, was really cool. What the dark light is, that you can use that to reveal, like, hidden doorways throughout the mission. And, um... Just things that weren't there that can't be seen by the naked eye. Use the black light to reveal them. It's cool. Like, Luigi can walk between walls as he finds different entrances and stuff. I thought that was cool. But that's about as enjoyable as that goes for the whole first mission. It kind of seems like a headache at some points. I really do wish they kind of had a creepier way of introducing the booze in this game. Like, remember the first one where Luigi, he just goes into that empty room and he moves the wall and he pushes the button and the booze come out and he got that creepy music and the scary boo laughs. Oh man, that scene is still in my mind. But with this one, it like... The boos are totally not scary. Like, they're not see-through at all. And instead of that little high-pitched creepy laugh, now it just sounds like they have a little baby laugh, which is really stupid. Though, I do like the way that Luigi can suck him up by now. Instead of, like, the first one, how he just uses the vacuum and, like, um... 
they'll fly away once they realize they're being sucked up. He can grab them by their tongue, and then he shoots them and they bounce around the room dropping coins, and then Luigi will suck them up by bouncing on them. I thought that was funny. So, I get the whole boothing of this game a half and half. I do kind of wish that the bosses in this game were actually hard. I mean, the first boss, it was interesting. I mean, you're going up sh against Shelob, basically, just this possessed spider, which I thought was kind of stupid. I felt like the ghosts were, or the bosses of each mansion were, like, totally random. I felt like the bosses in the first Luigi's Mansion actually had a point. Like, um, you know, like, uh, the first main boss was that baby ghost Charlie that scared the crap out of me when it did its cry for the first time. I just, oh, just mentioning that, I close my eyes, I can, I can still see him doing that cry. Just too creepy. Let's roll it right now, see if you're creeped out by that. <laughs> Anyway, each boss seemed to play a part in the mansion. You got that ghost family beginning in the ballroom, you have those mini ghosts, and then you got those ghost couple that are dancing, and then you got that artist ghost at one point who after beating all his ghosts, he says he wants to be with them in the poltergust so he doesn't put up a fight and lets you suck him up. There's a whole, there's a whole point to it, but with this one... It, there's just a possessor ghost taking over different things, like there's a giant spider, uh, there's a giant staircase, which was the one of the dumbest bosses, and there's other ghosts bossed through his mission that make no point in fighting. Like, it's completely random in thinking what the bosses are going to be for this game. So, of a major headache and pain and no point to it, that's a big point that really bothered me in Luigi's Mansion. Just no point in having the bosses in Luigi's Mansion too, because they have nothing to them. So in the five mansions, you got the normal mansion, you got a botanical garden mansion, which was probably my favorite one, like the man-eating plants, things like that. I like that one. Uh, then you got like a uh, different mansion, which is like a time-themed Egyptian one, which was kind of weird. And then you got one that's like up in the mountains, frozen one, which was my least favorite one. And then you got this big King Boo mansion, which is like the first original mansion, which as you learn to play through it, it's kind of a mix of all of them. But with the second mansion with the boss, it is terrible getting up there. Like, remember in the water temple that getting up to the boss, like, Link has to walk up the ramp with those spike things going side to side? It's similar to that, only it's a giant staircase. And every time you mess up going down the staircase, Luigi, like, he can't stand up, which is so stupid. So, if you're like on the second to last floor, he slides down like 20 floors, and all the while this little ghost is laughing at him the whole time. So, it takes a while to finally guess the right one, guess your the right staircases to go all the way up, which in the end, the boss isn't even fun to fight. It's super easy. Beat it on my first try without losing any health. It's just a haunted staircase. And there's no, like, difference in each section. You just have to pull on this cord three times to suck up the ghost, and then you beat it. It's a horrible boss. That was the worst boss of the game. The third mansion, the clock one... Um, honestly, it was pretty stupid. The only thing I liked about that was the toads. You got throughout the toads, like, getting toads. They play a big part in this one. Like, in the first one, how, you know, they, as you go on through the mansion, eventually you'll find them on the balcony, and they'll turn on the lights throughout the mansion. In this one, they, they can help you solve puzzles, but it's kind of annoying because they won't cross water or... 
things like that. It's kind of stupid. Anyway, with the clock mansion, the boss is so stupid. Like, you think it'd be like a time theme boss, like go through dimensions, things like that. It'd be so cool if you could go from like the very first style 8 bit Mario game <laughs> like that, all through like Mario Sunshine, different Mario Galaxy, different Mario games, and then to Luigi's Mansion. But. No, instead you're just like on this giant clock face, and in each hour hand, different bosses show up. Like you got the greenies, you got red ghosts, you got all these types of ghosts that you're on a time limit that you have to beat, and the hour and minute hands heat up so Luigi can't touch them or he'll take damage. But once you do that, you've, once you like complete all 12 hours in the time limit, you've beaten it. It's a really stupid boss level. F tier on that. Least favorite boss. I've said that a lot. I don't like any of the bosses in this game. I've already said that the third mansion in the ice, up in the mountains in the snowy area, I've already said that one is my least favorite. It is kind of cool, I guess, that Luigi can uh, suction things up. And he get a ride across like little poles, like a gondola like thing. That's kind of cool. Also, what I thought was cool is that he, the way that he can cross, he in this one he crosses beams, and uh, you kind of have to hold the switch if you're playing handheld or a controller. You have to hold it steady as he crosses the beams, or he'll lose his balance and fall off, and you'll take like 10% damage. But Honestly, that was the only fun part of this area. Like, the mansion's boss, apparently it made a lot of people quit Dark Moon. Just because it's so frustrating. I thought it was kind of cool at first. Like, it kind of reminded me Majora's Mask Battle with God. As, remember when Link's going around the area and Goron form chasing around God? It was kind of reminding me of that. Luigi's like in this giant little sled thing that has a cannon on it that he shoots uh, this little ice beast breaking off ice pieces. Once he breaks off all the ice pieces, he sucks up the ghost. And you have to do that before your cannon overheats. I almost got this one on my first try, too. I didn't know that it could overheat, though. I was on my last, uh, last one doing it. I had one piece left when I overheated. And after that, the magic was gone. <laughs> Took me, like, 15 tries before I finally got it. I almost quit the game because of it. So stupid. It's not even a fun boss fight. The music, too, it's not intense. It's really stupid. So, we're on the last mansion, and this one, if I had to say this one would be my favorite, because it felt like the very first mansion. I mean, you're going through the mansion, it's kind of a mix of all the mansions that you did. Like, the jungle one, the um, Arctic one, the ancient Egyptian one, and kind of, you go through portals in this one, so it's kind of like all those mixed in one, plus you can explore outside into everything with lightning going on. I thought that was fun. Um, but, yeah, after, like, you complete the four missions in that mansion, you take on this, um, mini boss which is a giant boo which is just frustrating this took me at least an hour hour and a half because i kept having to start over because i was taking so long it's just it's not fun uh all these boos you got to avoid this giant boo's attack and uh then uh, there's this, like, little, you're tiny, so there's this little train going around you and the big boo, and you gotta suck up the boo and launch him in front of this train, and you're, like, on this time limit, and the train is super slow, so sometimes you don't have time to line up the train, so you have to start up the whole thing again, but once you're able to be able to get boo to hit the drill in the front of the train, then he'll break up into little boos. You gotta launch the little boos into these cages that are on the train. And it, the 
whole targeting system is terrible on the Poltergeist, so half the time you'll miss the target, and then the whole thing will start over again. It is the most frustrating mini-boss fight. Horrible. I wish it was like the Big Boo boss fight in the first Luigi's Mansion. Remember when you fight Big Boo on the balcony, and it had the creepy scene where all the little boos like are circling Luigi, then they become the big one, and you can freeze the little boos, suck him up, and pop Big Boo on the statues to fight him. That was fun. But this one, this Big Boo boss fight was terrible. It was trash. I'd even rather do the Mario 64 Big Boo boss fight on the balcony, where if you fell, you had to give all the way up to the top where Boo was big again. That was funner compared to this. And when I'm saying that, you know this fight was bad. Alright, for King Boo's boss fight, this one was just sad. I beat this one my first try. Like, you're just... It took away the great thrill of fighting King Boo. Remember on the first Luigi's Mansion how you are on the roof with a giant robotic Bowser that you gotta suck up the bombs and blast the Bowser's head and then you can uh, suck up King Boo? It's, that's all taken away. In this one, you're just fighting King Boo in this little nine square area and you have to wait until like these little bombs are like giant balls fall on King Boo's head and then you can start sucking him up. And then, I guess this part was kind of fun, once you get him to zero, he'll tilt the area to go inside this mansion where you run, where he's trying to roll you over, you run avoiding him and then it rinses and repeats itself for three times. And then you finally beat him. Like, the music to it's horrible. There's no intense feeling to it. Like, yeah, you're trying to save Mario, but it doesn't feel like there's major consequences to losing against this battle against King Boo. It's not like the first one where it's intense music and there's fire all around, things like that. It's just boring. Really boring. So, for that... King, Bo King Boo boss fight, I go to 0 out of 10. The only thing of these mansions that I really liked was Polterpup, the ghost dog that Luigi gets at the end of the game. It is kind of annoying chasing around the mansion over and over again, but he's a really cute dog, a really cute ghost dog that Luigi gets to keep in the end. So even though Luigi doesn't get a mansion at the end of this game like he does in the first one, at least he gets a pet ghost dog. So, good for Luigi in that. Oh, and he does say Mario again. So, he gets his brother back, which... It all ends happy in the end. They take a group picture. Happy ending for Luigi. He gets a picture framed. And it ends with him and a Polter Pup sleeping in his house again. And that's the game. If I were to give this game a score on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd give it a 5? A that's me being nice. Maybe a 4.5? I, I don't know. Like I said at the beginning of this video, I don't know how to rate this game. Like, parts of me wanted to enjoy it. Like, the puzzles in it, it's super annoying how puzzly it was. They weren't hard. But I wanted more adventure than puzzles. And I got more puzzles than adventure. So, to be nice, I'll give it a 5 out of 10. But in my heart, it's a 4.5 out of 10. Pretty big flaw. Alright guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up. And subscribe to this channel. Also, if you loved Luigi's Mansion 2, good for you. Wasn't my cup of tea. Maybe Luigi's Mansion 3 will be better. I got that one. 
Maybe I'll make a video on that one too. Maybe I'll make a video comparing all three. I don't know. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Have a good day.